I'm Scott. I'm TJ. And this is a review. On today's episode, we'll be reviewing Prey. Prey is the fifth Predator movie. It's directed by Dan Trachtenberg, and uh, it's a movie. What'd you think about Prey, TJ? Quite the movie, Scott. What'd you think about Prey? <laughs> Quite the movie as well, TJ. Indeed. This has been our review. Goodbye. Bye. Click. Taste my lightning, fucker! No! So this is your first <laughs> Predator movie that you're aware of. That I'm aware of, yeah. And that includes Alien vs. Predator. You've not seen that either? No. Oh, well, that's fine. But, um, so me on the other hand, I'm a big Predator fan. I consider the Predator in the, uh, the horror trifecta of the 80s of sci-fi monsters, which of course includes the Xenomorph, The Thing, and Predator. I'm a big fan of the Predator, and the first Predator movie is kind of the only great Predator movie. Interesting. Um, the second one is, is okay. It's essentially a remake of the first one, but set in the city. Okay. And then the third one is directed by Robert Rodriguez. It's nice. called Predators. And it's starring Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Are they all canon? Like, is this part of a universe, or is it more loose and kind of episodic they, in a they, way? They've always tried to keep it sort of canon, but sure. none of them are ever really related in any way. So about, besides like Alien 1 and 2, which are like direct, direct series. No, it's nothing like that. I think I'm, they, they reference Dutch Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in subsequent Predator films. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so the thing with Predators is their whole, their whole shtick is they basically travel around different planets and they get dropped off and they use it as a game reservation to hunt the most uh, dangerous game, man, or whatever is on that planet. And then they get some trophies and they go home. And why? I don't know, it's their thing. Yeah. And that's what this guy does. So this movie starts with the Predator being dropped off. I believe this is in the uh, Pacific Northwest. They never quite say exactly where this takes place, do they? Not that I know of. It's it, this movie is very bare bones, um, very in a good way, I would say. The best way. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like, this felt like what I want from an actual horror movie to me, or like action movie. However, you specifically, it's it felt more like the re the Revenant. 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 Yeah. Revenant. Absolutely. Well, yes. that's partially due to the setting. I mean, it takes place in seventeen seventeen. Sure, you're, but we're mostly with that one character. Like we right. got our lead. Right. You're out in kind of the wilderness. You're with. It's it's all about um, indigenous. All these actors in this movie, the stars are indigenous, um, which is really cool. It's all the it's Comanche great, tribe. Yeah. Um, it's a really interesting and honestly, it's a perfect setting for this type of movie because the predator, that's their whole thing is you have to strip away all the technology and you have to go at them as hunter versus hunter. It has to be very, and that's the only way you can defeat them is to really out game them. And that's, right. I think thematically such an important thing in this movie that the main character, she, her whole goal is she wants to become a hunter. She's a tracker. The men of her tribe don't want her to be a hunter. It's just part of the patriarchy. Oh no. Why do you want to hunt? because you all think that I can't. Well, so I mean, the tactical element of it from our hero was great. Yeah, I think that was a smart choice for the movie. And like I said, in the original Predator, that's the whole thing is he starts, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dutch, starts with all these guns and all these guys. And I wish I had seen it in a theater. A hundred percent. It the screams, watch me in a theater. Yeah, so if you don't know, you can watch this on Hulu right now. It's streaming directly on there. It was direct release. There was a limited run in some theaters here in LA, but. Right, select cities. It's, it, it, we both saw it on, on, uh, at home, unfortunately. And it's honestly baffling to me why the studio would make this decision to not release this in the theater. I mean. Not only is it it's a really well-made film, I mean, it looks great, and the yeah. cinematography is Beautiful. great. Beautiful. The setting is great. It's a very big, cinematic, blockbuster scope of a movie that mm -hmm. it's, it's very confusing why they wouldn't release this in theaters. Um, 
And I think that was a big detriment for me. But also, I think going into the, the visuals, I think one thing that it didn't ruin the movie for me, but I found the, the computer, the CGI, very inconsistent. Sure. The Predator, which is a mix of practical suit and mm -hmm. CGI effects, looks great pretty much all the time. So the animals, pretty shoddy. And you know, some of them look great. There's a bear at one point that looks like dog shit, though. It's so at odds with everything else in the movie, you know? You know, truthfully, that doesn't affect me as a viewer. I know it affects a lot of people. Sure. It doesn't, I'm, I'm mostly story focused, so I, I'm very forgiving with a CGI bear. Well, here's why, and it, do, it won't always ruin a movie for me, but it took me out more in this movie because of the, the setting, being a period piece. And I think the other thing, it, it just makes it stand out more that like there's all these beautiful uh, natural settings that yeah. have this like computer looking thing in front of you. It's a little jarring. That's very fair. It knows how to hunt. I know how to survive. So I think that's a good spot to bring us to final thoughts. So TJ, give us uh, final thoughts on Prey. Look, having never seen a Predator movie in my life, I'll have to give it a ranking of the best Predator movie I've ever seen in my life. And that's just the facts. All jokes aside, I really liked this. I was completely enthralled and like I said, my only complaints are I wish I saw it in a theater and I wish they had the ability to stick to it and just go for it in the native language. But that being said, it was an incredibly endearing story. I loved to watch her progression and learn. Like I thought they did an amazing job with the adventure element of it. It was super small, as you see with the predator and when they're hunting, it starts with literally like a snake hunting like a mouse and then it goes bigger and bigger. And so you kind of watch the progression of the food chain happen throughout the movie, leading up to finally them fighting. Fantastic script, fantastic performances, loved the action, CGI was all right, didn't take me out of it. So if I had to give this movie anything, I'd give it five out of five bow and arrows. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I, I want to echo a lot of what you said. I agree with everything. Um, I thought this was a great movie. Uh, I do have a little bit more baggage with this franchise. I'm a big fan of The Predator as a character. I love the original film. I'm a huge fan. So some of the one-liners took me out as much as I love to see them. Uh, for me, this movie tonally was a little bit more serious than some of the other Predator movies, and I felt like they didn't need to be as jokey and just to kind of toe that line a little more would have worked a little better for me. CGI at times was so shoddy that it did catch my eye. The bear really bothered me. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. I think, I think that having it all in Comanche would have really engrossed me in the world a lot more. I think, I think there's a lot of improvements that I could make with this that I would bump me up to a five. But for what we have, I do like this movie a lot. I do, like you said, I love the progression of seeing the Predator kind of working his way up the food chain. The actual fight scenes, which are, they don't overdo it, but there's a great fight scene where the Predator really just goes ham and gets to fuck up everybody. And it's, it's worth it. It's a really fun, and it's nice to have that little cathartic release and still have this tight story script happening in the background without just needing to you know, indulge in violence to make it entertaining. So yeah, some of those things knocked it down for me a little bit, but I still think this is one of the best movies I've seen all year. It's the second best Predator movie. It's real close with the first one for me, but I'm gonna have to give Prey four roped tomahawks out of five. Whatever did this, I can kill it. You know, bravo to this movie for not taking the easy, yeah. emotional, manipulative route of killing the dog. Absolutely. You don't have to Marley and me just because you have a dog. Yeah, you don't got a John Wick just because you got a dog. Yeah, you don't have to um, where the red fern grows just because you got a dog. Yeah, just because you got a dog doesn't mean you got to... Doesn't mean you gotta do the thing where you kill the dog. Yeah, sometimes you just don't gotta kill the dog because you got a dog. Sometimes you just got a dog. Sometimes the dog just is a dog and it lives forever. You know what's a great dies. movie with a dog that lives and never dies? Paws of Fury, the legend of Hank. Paws of Fury. Meow. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Meow. <laughs> like and subscribe. That's not staying it. Hey, uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Subscribe and like. Subscribe and like. Luke drops in.